Someone recently asked me what I thought about the fact that there are some healthy, long-lived vegans out there. And does that sort of throw a wrench in the gears of my proverbial theory that veganism isn't healthy? Hello, Kinder Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Zach here with Secrets of Longevity.com. There was someone that asked me a question a while back around long-lived, healthy-looking vegans that are out there and what do I think of them. Now, there are plenty of good examples of people who have been on a plant-based diet, even a raw plant-based diet for a long period of time, and they look reasonably good, and that's definitely what got me on it in the first place, I have to say myself. Um, just to sh say a few names out there is Peter Ragnar, that was one of my biggest inspirations, Brian Clement, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, Lou Corona, Fred Bishi, and there's many others too, but these were just a few of the ones that I saw as being uh, the healthiest looking for their age, or better than their age, and there are definitely also many vegans and vegetarians, raw or not, who look their age or even worse than their age. Um, but out of the ones that I think look good for their age, there is a common vein that goes through them uh, and their, specifically their dietary practices but also their lifestyle practices in general, uh, is that they follow a uh, very low insulin type diet. So a diet that's not going to boost insulin up too much. So that means not overdoing the fruit, if not any kind of sugar at all. And carbohydrates are medium to low on the low end. They're not super restrictive of fat and they're not super restrictive of protein. I mean, Gabriel Cousins talks about protein and the way he talks about diet, he talks about both protein, fat, and carbohydrate as all needing to be fairly low. But then again, he's very little and whatever he's doing there to keep himself going seems to be working for him. I'm not going to comment on his unique situation, but the idea of um, eating a very rich in grain diet with beans or a very rich in fruit diet does not, in my opinion, sort of end up showing a uh, long and healthy life. There is a, one more exception, which would be probably Bernardo uh, Paolo, uh, who at 110 he looks great, but he's omnivore. He does eat lamb a couple times a year on holidays, and he also eats fish several times a week. That's something that a lot of uh, people are omitting when they're talking about him and claiming he's. Uh, a raw vegan, which is totally inaccurate. So in this video I'm going to refrain from talking about specific out people out there and anything I think negatively of them in terms of criticizing them. I just want to talk more broadly at this point that yes, there are these examples of long-lived people, healthy and vibrant looking people, people that look younger than their age at a elevated age and happen to be doing it on a plant-based diet. In the case of Peter Ragnar, he's actually added some animal foods back in, not flesh foods, but he'd be classified as a vegetarian now. Um, and that has helped to put on more lean muscle mass and reduce uh, body fat on his stomach, I believe. But yeah, a common thing that I find a lot of vegans and raw vegans use as an argument, which isn't an argument at all, it's just a statement, is that, you know, we can look at these long-lived people like Winston Churchill or uh, that comedian whose name escapes me at the moment, who smoked cigars and drank heavily, yet they lived to be, you know, in their 90s into their hundreds. So that means there's going to be long-lived people that eat meat as well. But that's immediately lumping meat into the same category of cigars and hard alcohol, or excessive alcohol drinking. Um, one could say the same thing about the vegans that look good. There's these unique examples of people that seem to have it working, but there's reams and reams of people who have tried similar things and failed miserably because uh, it just, it does not work for everyone. And that's really what it comes down to is that everyone's metabolically unique and there's what I think of as a scale. On one end you have high protein, high fat type diet. On the other end of the scale you have high carbohydrate, low fat, low protein. So it's really actually high fat and high carb. And then somewhere in the middle there's going to be a mix of some sort. And people function best at different places on the scale. And I feel quite strongly now, after many years of consulting with people and looking at a lot of this research and stuff that's out there on nutrition, is that people thrive in different areas, and even in the long term. So there's no blanket statements I can make like, 
you know, carbs make everyone fat, or carbs make everyone more susceptible to heart disease, or fat makes everyone more susceptible to heart disease. The fat you eat, the fat you wear, or you consume animal cholesterol, and it's immediately going to go and stick to the edges of the capillaries, forming plaque. That's just not the case with everyone. But of course, there are people that those kinds of diets don't work as well for. And that has to do with hormonal makeup, genetics, um, your metabolic rate, and a wide variety of other factors. A big factor is also the dominant glands in your body, and I'll be getting into some of that work of Dr. Abravanel in future videos as I sort of delve into that. We have to be very cautious about taking any one example of someone and elevating them to the status of uh, they're the perfect example of why this works and it should work for everyone. That's not a scientific and critically minded uh, way of thinking. That's actually a very dogmatic way of thinking. And we need to, yes, use people as examples to base theories on, but we cannot use in our minds these examples as creating facts in our mind, which a lot of people do. And that's just an example of why there's such a pervasive lack of critical thinking in society today, and especially in the nutrition field, and even more especially in the holistic nutrition field. And that's what I strive to bring forth on this channel. And I'm not against anyone who chooses to be vegan, I'm not against anyone who chooses to eat a lot of plants in their diet, or base their diet mostly around grains or starches. Um, it's just that there's uh, evidence very strong that does not work for everyone. There's also good evidence that even those people who do have a very high plant-based diet, in many cases, they actually do better when they have a bit of animal foods in there in the long run. Bernardo Paolo is an example, and there's others. When you look at the long-lived cultures around the world, um, they often have high plant-based diets. Not all of them, but many of them do. But they always have certain types of animal foods in there, um, and they have that unique spot that has a role in that. And then so other people will come up and say, well, you know what, there's no long-lived people that look good on animal foods. I did make a video about this, which you can watch right here if you want to check that out. The past video, really well done. Sort of looking at the reasons why we don't see a ton of people, you know, that were on a paleo diet that are 100 today. Well, 100 years ago when someone like that would have been born, there would have been no option for that or no knowledge base for that. And everyone that grew up in a farming community would have to eat what's available. The agricultural revolution did spur good things that happened in humanity. And if you were eating that way with higher grains, tons of potatoes, tons of starch, even a lot more fruit if you were in a more tropical region, there just wouldn't have existed uh, people in modern society that would have been eating that way. But we do, as we look and I show in this video, that there was a lot of long-lived uh, Native Americans and that was really the only groups that had the best um, sort of tracking in terms of their lifespan. We don't see that really with the Inuit, we don't see that in the African tribes, we don't see that sort of tracking in European hunter-gatherers because obviously that was way too far back in time that that was taking place. We don't see that in uh, other areas of the world of hunter-gatherers that there was this keeping track of certain famous people amongst those hunter-gatherers who lived a long time. But what we see with the Native Americans is yes, it's possible to live into the 70s, 80s, 90s and that lifestyle which is out in the open and you have more risk of death from injury um, really detracts from the potential of living a long time. But as we see from them and from people in the paleo diet today and higher fat, low carbohydrate diets is that they have an equal ability as certain people who do well on high carbohydrate diets to live a long time, to look very vibrant and to uh, be successful on that path. So this might have been a bit of a rambling and on the spot video, but I wanted to sort of give that perspective that, in my opinion, there's an equal potential for people, once they're on the diet that's right and works for them, to have very great health in the long run and to look healthy and vibrant and have a reduced effect of aging and also have these other benefits from their diet. And likewise, there's also just as many people that get caught into the dogmatic trap which we see from some raw vegans, some vegans in the long run who look very haggard, very sick and unhealthy. And you see it also in the low carbohydrate community. Um, look at Dr. Atkins, he obviously wasn't in a good state of health when he died and he died from a head injury uh, from falling on the ice, but he was definitely what we'd call overweight. He might have actually done better on a lot more carbohydrates or perhaps he just needed to work out more. That's another factor is you have to look at the other factors that are in people's lifestyles that lead to them 
not looking so good or looking really good. Um, and then also, of course, there's supplementation and other things. I and mean, those first few raw vegans I talked about at the start who have been successful in the long run and look really good in, you know, in their 60s and beyond is that they all supplement with whole food based supplements, herbs, and these kinds of things that humans have used for millennia. Um, this is a really funny picture I'm just going to post on the screen right here. And as you can see, that one line in there that about chimpanzees is that they can identify over 150 different types of medicinal plants that they use in their environment. Now, any philosophy that goes beyond just talking about food and starts saying, you should not take any supplement ever, you should not do this, you should not do that, because all these things that are additions are harmful. Now that's getting into something that's beyond just get it talking about macronutrients and their effect on the body. Because we know these things have effects on the body, positive and negative, and we have to determine what's good and what's not, and just being against all of them for no reason other than dogma and uh, financial instability. <laughs> is not uh, productive and is not really coming from a standpoint of let's do this for our best health. I think the idea that closing yourself off from that is very uh, limited in thinking and also skews the idea of uh, what's actually going on here for these people that look good at 60 and beyond. You know, if they're all look using different types of supplements, um, and I do not mean synthetic isolated supplements, and then there's this group that looks terrible in their old age but, and might be very active, but they're against supplementation. We can't really talk about, you know, this diet is better than that diet because there's other things going on, such as the lack of or use of supplements that really skews that. So with that, check out the links below. I've got links if you want to purchase any products through affiliates that would help support me in creating great content for you guys. And also you can check out the consultation page on my site where you can set up a phone consult. Also subscribe if you haven't subscribed before, like and favorite the video, and with that, take care and embrace life without limits.